how to hack a fog machine controller. What you're going to need is a multimeter that has ohms on it, your fog machine or smoke machine controller that just have a push button, either one. What else we got here? We got some shrink tube. We got this little cool device. This just holds wires. We got some solder. We got some fluff. We got one of these crappy little knives that don't work, but we'll just throw that over there. We got a couple relays, screwdriver, some wire cutters. You gotta have a soldering iron. A pair of scissors, hot glue sticks, glue gun, a screw, and a couple of these little screwdriver thingies. What I like to do is have a, I always, it doesn't matter what surface I'm on, this white board is just nice for video but I always solder wires on top of cardboard everybody's seen one of these you hook this to a fog machine and it has like that plug on to it so basically what happens is when the fog machine's ready the green light will come on and then you push the button by simply adding a little relay you can activate your fog machine with a haunted house controller DMX Booboo whatever you may like this is a relay and it's 12 volt DC but you can activate 120 volts with it on here you got a positive on this side negative on that side for 12 volt this is either positive or this is positive doesn't matter the one in the center is your wire that you're gonna break you have one wire soldered here for sure one side's normally open and one side's normally closed but we have to check it because we don't know now what we have here is a voltmeter this right there is continuity so we switch this to continuity and you got two wires red and black and my assistant's gonna hold the camera because you need like three hands to do that now like I said this wire right here will always have something connected to it. We've got to find the normally closed. So when the numbers move up here, that will tell me it's closed. That's open, closed. So if you hook a wire here to here, it's just like they're touching. All right, so what we want to do is take that and just bend that down. So we know that is normally closed. We are not going to be using this for this project. We are going to use the normally open circuit. You got your 12 volts on each side and the wire you're going to split will go from here here to here when when 12 volts is applied it will make this connection which therefore it will be like somebody pushing this button so your fog machine will come on and activate when you use your haunted house prop controller or DMX. And what we're going to use for the 12 volt wire is just some simple, I believe this is 22 gauge wire. It doesn't have to be very thick because we're only putting 12 volts to here. First thing we have to do, I hate these ones. You take your wire strippers and split the two wires. You have a white wire and a bare wire. And you just take off a little bit on the end. So you have a little bit of wire showing. All right, grab one of your controllers has a button like that and let's pop these screws out so we just open this thing up makes a nice little holder you stick this thing out of your way so what we got here and I, i'm sure i don't have to tell you make sure this ain't plugged in to not don't have it plugged into your fog machine or any because you could get electrocuted and die and then somebody will use you in a prop in the haunted house okay let's flip this over and look we got a light and we got a switch we flip it over here's our switch wire white and green them are the two wires we have to cut in cut away now this is very tiny i guess they really don't want you to do this you take your little white wire strip it back your other white wire strip it back green wire strip it back strip back your other green wire so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clip the black wire too i just like clipping wire i'm sure there's somebody at your haunt that loves cutting wires i'm just gonna strip that back and make it a little bit better so we'll be able to get some heat treat tubes on there now we're going to make this controller where you'll still have access to this button if you need to and it's going to have an override which will be the relay and you'll be able to connect it to one of your haunted house controllers or dmx systems or whatever you want once you got all your wires snipped trip out the end now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of solder on these wires and we first use this flock and this technique right here is called tinting your wire so it's easier to solder such so real tiny so you just take your soldering iron and you just put a little bit on there see a little puddle on there that's all you need and all you have to do touch that wire see how it's silver now put a little bit more solder on there a little bit more solder on there tinting 
the wire. I'm sure this vetoes all manufacturer's warranties, so if you don't know how to do all this, don't do it. Okay, once you got your wires all tinted up, this is probably one of the most crucial parts. You don't forget to put your shrink tube on, and you wait for your wire to cool down before you put your shrink tube on, or it will shrink. Now the black wire, we don't really need. We just wanted to strip it back so we had some more wire to work. So you have to kind of hold it with one hand and hold this with the other. And you take your soldering iron and you just touch these two. Hold it there. You can blow on it. Got your two wires soldered back together. Slip your shrink tube over. Then you take a little lighter and you melt that sucker. Bam! Now, your green wire and your white wire, what we're gonna do is just add another wire to each one of those. I've got a little piece cut right here. And it has a white stripe on it. It's hard to see, but trust me, it does. We forgot to tint these wires. You wanna get all your wires tinted. You don't have to go back and do this all again, like I did. Take a little bit of solder, a little puddle, tint. A little bit of solder, tint. Tent it. Bit of solder. Tent that baby. Ooh, she pretty. All right, so we're gonna work with one wire at a time. We'll make sure it's all cool to the touch. Let's do this white wire first. You put your two little wires together like that. You get your shrink tube. You only need a little tiny piece. Put them together. Kind of bend them around each other. And what we're gonna do is solder all those wires together right there. Now, that's where this tool comes in handy. So you can grab your wire like that, position it however you want it, and then you can just take this like that. If you want, you can somehow grab this wire or whatever and hold it there. Or if you're talented, you just hold this with one hand like that and touch your soldering iron to there. And all those wires will be soldered together. You can come around here so you can see. Go around me. Make sure your soldering iron don't have any solder on it because you don't really don't need no solder because the, the wires already have solder on them. What you're going to do is touch it for a little bit. Make sure they're all connected. And if you look at it really close, I don't know how good this focus is going to be. But you got to trust me. They're all together. All three of those wires make one wire. Now you wait till it cools down a little bit. Slide that shrink tube right back over that connection. Don't do it while it's hot. You do it while it's hot. That shrink tube's gonna melt, and then you gotta start all over again. Just wait a couple seconds. Bam, that looks professional. Okay, same thing with the green wire. Let's bend her around here like this, and off to grandma's house. Now, I thought I tinted all this. I didn't tint that green one right there, so I gotta tint it. A little bit of solder. Mmm, a little bit more on there. All right, you take your other wire. Like so, you have to get this in focus and somehow, I don't know. Take your other wire, get your shrink tube. That piece might be a little too small. Shrink tube is pretty awesome. Saves you from using tape or anything else. You could hot glue it. I don't know if I'd really trust it that much. You pull that shrink tube far away from his, where you're soldering as possible. Heat around the shrink tube is bad. All right, let's put in an alligator clip. This one's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. All we need to do is touch that all together. Here, come around the other side. Touch that all together, make it all hot, and make it all one. You don't want too much heat on it, because you put too much heat on it, them wires gonna come back. That rubber around them wires, then you're gonna have to start all over again. Make sure it's cool to the touch. Pull that shrink tube right up over that wire. Take your lighter, shrink it. Shrink that bad thing. All right. So now we got this controller still functionable here. And all we did is solder two wires off of it. We're going to get our relay. Remember, I bent down that one, so we're not going to use it. So we want a little, we want that center one, that one right there. This wire and this wire. And it doesn't matter. You can put the green one here, the white one here, or the white one here, and the green one here. Because all this is going to do is when 12 volts is applied DC, it's going to flip a switch in here and connect this one to that one. Take your flux and just dip, dip, dip. You get yourself some solder, tint it on it. Now you're going to want to use a little bit more solder when you're putting all this together. But you can use your little stand, alligator clip, roach clip, whatever you want to call it. You can use a pair of pliers if you want. So you get a little bit more solder on your soldering iron. 
take one of the wires. There you go. There you go. Hold it there. Blow on it. Done. You take your other wire. Put it here. Get in the right spot. It'll take a couple minutes. Don't be in a rush. Now your your soldering irons get pretty hot, so you might want to use a holder or something. I'm just used to doing this like this. So now we got a circuit. So when 12 volts is applied to here, it will push that button basically. So now what we would do is add two wires here for one for positive, one for negative. Take your piece of wire, strip it back some. I really like doing this stuff. I love electronics, I love haunted houses. First haunted house I ever worked at was one in some guy up in Cleveland or Canton. I forget his name, but he had a haunted castle. And what it was was shipping containers. And the way that he put all the shipping containers together, it made a haunted house. I don't know if he's still in business, he sold it, or what. Actually, when I was five or six, my brother and my sister would do a haunted house in my father's garage. Like every Halloween, they made pretty good money at it. They just did it for the neighborhood. Charged like a couple bucks to get in or something like that. I was always the kid that had the, um, my throat sliced. Every year they'd put me under a swimming pool. When people would come in, like one of those little plastic swimming pools, and people would walk in and I'd hear them, I'd flip up the swimming pole with my sliced neck. Scare the hell out of them. Little kids scare people bad. All right. So do a little tug test. So this is your wire right here that you're gonna run to your haunt controller or to a 12 volt adapter or to another button where you push it and make a connection. No. You can't do that on this, so. And this needs to go to 12 volts. This wire will go to your 12 volts for your haunt controller. Or you can hook it to an adapter and plug it in the wall. Or use it on a DMX dimmer pack. So now, how are we going to stick all this in here and make it look all neat and pretty and everything? This is how you're going to do it. Take yourself a screwdriver. I don't know how long you have to heat it up for. I just like to get it hot. And then you take it and just poke a hole. You could use a drill bit and make it a little bit more prettier if you wanted. I got the ceiling fan on. We've been having some really nice warm days here in Ohio. Or if you have like a little blowtorch around or something, but you don't want to heat it up too much and burn your hand holding the screwdriver. There you go. Poke a little hole through it like that. Do it however you want. There ain't no rules to this. What I like to do is take this wire and tie it in a knot. So if somebody accidentally trips over it or yanks on it or nothing, it's not gonna rip this whole this controller apart. Tie that in a knot, just like that. And take your other end, put it through your hole. I know some of you out there have a dirty mind. I'm talking about holes and strippers and now all that other stuff. It's a family show here. Pull your wire through. If you pull it through, it won't go past that knot. Boom, boom, boom. Now what I like to do, and I should have already done it, just kind of fold these wires into place and see how this is going to go in here. There you go. Now what I like to do before I glue anything in there or, or seal it up or anything, what I do is I take a volt adapter I have the wire stripped I have one laying around just a red wire and a white wire and I'll tie the red one on this is 12 volts DC won't hurt you 110 will now get, get, get closer so you can hear that clicking and when you touch this that sound you're hearing Closing, open, closing, open, closing, open. Now to see if this works right, you still have your continuity tester. Continuity or whatever, however you say it. See what we're going on here. So we touch the center one and this outer one. You see we have nothing? Now, if we connect this wire right here, can you hear that little click? That means it turned on. 
Watch them numbers. Bam! We have a connection. So, by applying 12 volts to this relay, what's going to happen if your smoke machine's already heated up, and it all depends on the type of smoke machine you have, it will fall. It will trigger once you apply 12 volts to it. Now, if you don't have an adapter with wire strip like this, and you have an adapter that just has this plug of thing on it, here's a way to do this too. Take one of your wires, and just bend it in half a little bit, stick it in that hole. And the alligator clip's hooked to this metal, which is all connected to this. Then you can just take your alligator clip and Get closer, you hear that? So this is your ground on the outside and on the inside you're positive. And then you check your continuity again. Yep, it works. Undo it, check it, oh, it's off. So now you get all that stuff out of the way and you get your hot glue gun, pull your little thing out. And plug your 12 volt adapter, get it all the way, get the 110 volt wire out of the way. Get yourself a glue stick, glue gun, just give it a little squirt down in there. See it? This little puddle. Just stick that relay right in that 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 liquid, that liquid glue until it dries. Just make sure it's not gonna be hitting anything. You'll be able to Put this back. Now you're gonna have to hold your relay still for a little bit until that glue dries. Kind of blow on it. I know I'm hired for the job. I know all the jokes, I've heard them all. All right, you're gonna be holding this thing for a little while. This is the magic of filmmaking. I just turned the damn camera off. After you're all done with that, just squirt some hot glue over them bare wires. Don't have to be all fancy. That's just in case somebody opens this up and don't know what the hell this is and you know. You should have one person on your team that loves doing this. So now we just take this and put it back together. Make sure no wires are sticking out. Sometimes one wire wants to just Give you a little trouble. What I do is I screw them in a little bit, each one. Take a look all around it, make sure it's all closed up, and then screw it shut tight. And that, my friends, is now a hacked controller. And all you do is you plug this into your smoke machine, and say if you have a timer, because you can buy these with timer, or you can go to eBay and buy a simple little timer for uh, five bucks or less. Or you can hook this up to your haunted house prop controller. The ones we use are uh, freight props. A little expensive, but they really do the job and they've held up for three years now. So we're really proud of them. But there's so many out there. You can look and people tell you different things. All you need is 12 volt positive, 12 volt negative. Once your fog machine heats up, activate your controller and your smoke machine will come on exactly when you want it to come on. Like I said, it doesn't work every single time depending on how fast the groups are coming in, how long, how much smoke you're blowing, how long it takes for your fog machine to heat up. There's a lot of variables there. But you can use this basically on just about any fog machine on the market far as the ones I saw so hope you enjoy and I don't have a fog machine to show you this but I will next Saturday and I'll demonstrate it for you so you can all see how it works with a uh, haunted house controller all right have a good evening guys stay haunting